Let's get things started now in the UK, where British Prime Minister Rishi Sunak and Labour leader Keir Starmer have faced off in their televised debate ahead of the UK election. Both leaders went head to head over issues uh, from health to immigration and ethics, and struggling to be heard above a noisy protest outside. The debate took place in the central city of Nottingham and represented Mr. Sunak's uh, last big opportunity to give his right-wing conservatives who are trailing Labour by about 20 points a fighting chance in the July 4th polls. He accused Stammer of uh, taking people for fools over Labour's plans to reduce immigration, while Stammer also accused uh, the Prime Minister of uh, one of the country's wealthiest men of being out of touch and too rich to understand the concerns of most common uh, Britons. Well, the two leaders have met at several debates and public sessions with uh, voters increasingly focusing on who has better suited to, or who is rather better suited to lead the country? British voters are choosing 650 lawmakers for the House of Commons, and the leader of the party that secures a majority of seats, either alone or in coalition, will become Prime Minister of the UK. Let's dissect and make sense of all of this. Joining us is a political commentator, Dr. Tony Agbon, a senior lecturer at the Angler Ruskin University in London. Doctor, uh, I mean, wonderful and, and great to see you again. But I wonder, what's your assessment of these uh, final debates between the Prime Minister and, of course, the Labour leader, Mr. Stammer? Yeah, thank you, Kelly. Um, listening to your you know, initial report there, that was very robust. And like you alluded to, the, the debate uh, yesterday in Nottingham was very fierce, it was passionate, it was argumentative. For all the elements of um, what a debate should be and how it should be, they were present. A lot of fireworks, both from the um, current Prime Minister, Rishi Sunak, and then his main challenger, uh, Kistama, uh, we, they, they were firing on all cylinders. And um, we were all watching here all over the UK. Everybody was glued to his uh, television set, those on radio, and trying to make sense of what uh, these two men were saying. Because anyhow you look at it, one of them is certainly going to be the Prime Minister of the United Kingdom come uh, July 4th, uh, 2024. So the debate was, it was interesting. And uh, depending on which side of the divide, um, Every British citizen belong. Some were saying that uh, Sunak won the debate. Others were saying mm. it was Stammer that won the debate. But key issues were discussed. And I'm sure as we go yes. in this conversation... I mean, yes, we'll because I, some of I, 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 I'm just going to take you up on that, uh, Doctor, because, I mean, you are in London, and I'm just wondering perhaps what exactly are the striking issues. What's at stake here as these two men fight to become uh, Prime Minister for Rishi Sunak a second time? So what were the major issues that drove the debate? Yeah, the, the, the key issues and which affect the life of uh, those of us who live in the United Kingdom, they are just very simple. Number one is the economy. Number two is health care, immigration, and then tax. So those are the four main issues. And during that debate, you could see that both uh, Rishi Sunak and um, uh, Staman, they, they were touching on these issues. So you, you know, when you look at the United Kingdom, it's, it's, a, it's a pure welfare state. So there's a lot of uh, state support for citizens here, those who are vulnerable, those who are not working, or those who have some health challenges and are not able to work. The government gives a lot of support. So, but the challenge in the United Kingdom, at least for the years I have lived there, is you know, government increasingly is finding it difficult to fund some of these things. So in the debate yesterday, a lot of the questions that people were throwing at them was, how are you going to fund some of these promises you are making now? So for the economy, the, in the last 14 years, the Conservative Party have been in power. So mm. a lot has happened. Some of them uh, self-inflicted. Some of them, as a result of things that are happening externally in the global economy, has really made, uh, you know, life you know, a bit difficult, really difficult for people. Cost of living is very high here. Inflation at the time was even beyond, was in double digit. It was above mm. 10%. So these were the issues. So who is going to tackle it more? Uh, Sunak was very, very um, 
very much on the front foot yesterday. He was, you know, attacking Starmer. And I was saying that uh, for UK voters, if they vote for the Labour Party and they come to power, taxes are going to increase. Uh, households are going to pay like £2,000 extra in tax, which if, if you convert that in Nigeria currency, which is uh, going to close about 4 million uh, naira if you convert it. So mm -hmm. these were the issues. But Starmer on his side was saying uh, that is not what he's going to do. So there was that back and forth there. Then when you look at um, the economy itself, so people are looking at who has the best program. And for most people in the UK, 14 years of the conservative government, and this is what happens in this country over time. People are already, you know, drained of the party. They just want something new. And recent polls that have just been done by the economists and uh, the uh, polling firm, uh, we think, you know, have projected that... Um, the Labour Party is going to have a 280-seat majority, the highest since the Second World War. So, but we'll watch and see what will happen. Yes. I mean, Doctor, there is a war in Ukraine, Russia's invasion of Ukraine. There is a war in Gaza as well. So, from an international perspective, UK's foreign policy is very pivotal to other countries as well. So, uh, just how do you think allies and perhaps enemies in court also would have viewed their debates as well. Yeah, uh, you, you are very right on that. The, the two crises you mentioned now in the Ukraine and the one going on between uh, Israel and uh, the Hamas in Gaza, they are going to play a key role. But I think for the more recent one, which is the crisis in Gaza, I think the, the two political parties have been able to dance their way around. You know how politicians are. They are very slippery. They are very diplomatic. So people cannot really hold them by the wrist as to where they stand. So I think um, that has kind of subsided a little bit. Then for the Ukraine, the crisis between Russia and Ukraine, which has been going on for about two years and four months and all that, um, the United Kingdom citizens, they tend to support their government. They believe that uh, Russia cannot just annex a sovereign nation like Ukraine. So that one uh, may not have a, a, a significant impact on the election. But the Gaza own is, um, is a very high uh, touch point. And uh, depending on how um, the Conservative Party, which currently has the Prime Minister and the Labour Party, which is uh, the challenger, depending on how they, what they tell the British people in these final days, which is always very critical in UK elections, that will now determine where the pendulum will swing as far as that uh, Israel-Hamas issue in Gaza is concerned. So it's very dicey, and uh, we are all uh, keeping our fingers crossed. Absolutely. We are as well here monitoring and following all the developments uh, happening in the UK and all around the world. But just before I let you go, because there was a, a noisy protest outside of uh, where the debates held. Can you talk to us about that? Yeah, yeah, so there were noisy protests. Uh, people are disenchanted. There are issues about the environment as well, and then the Gaza thing uh, as well. So those are the issues. I think it's a mix of both, you know, how um, the incoming government will uh, deal with the uh, issue of climate change and then how the seeming carnage in uh, Gaza will stop. A lot of people believe that... Uh, the UK government have not been decisive enough putting pressure on Israel. So those are the dynamics that are playing out. Absolutely, Doctor. I mean, the other issues just before the debate was the fact that the Prime Minister had some internal issues within his party. He had called for the elections earlier than schedule, and, and his party members as well were a bit surprised and shocked at that decision by the prime minister. But it's about less than a week to go. We'll monitor and see how events unfold as regards uh, the elections in UK. But most thank you most kindly for your analyses and commentaries, uh, Dr. Tony Agbon, senior lecturer at the Angla Ruskin University in London. Thank you as always. Thank you, Kelly. It's been my pleasure.